Hey YouTube, this is Edward Underhill. I'm here with a video review for you guys. Uh, this was a review that I got requested by one of my subscribers back in 2006, uh, 2016. And it was a review of uh, SummerSlam 2015. Which I got done watching uh, last night. And um, I know this is a, a day later too than I was originally intending, but it was just a matter of finding time to sit down and do the review. So I finally got time to do it. But, um... This was a really good show to go back and watch, um, and it was one of six pay-per-views in 2015 that I actually watched, um, along with uh, Royal Rumble, Fastlane, WrestleMania 31, Battleground, and Survivor Series from that year. And of the six pay-per-views from that year that I watched, this was definitely the second best pay-per-view of the six. Uh, WrestleMania 31 was my favorite from that year, um, of the six pay-per-views that I watched. Um, but this was a very close number two. Um, of course, here, this is the DVD edition. Um, you got Brock Lesnar and The Undertaker on the cover, along with Seth Rollins. Um, from the semi-main event with uh, John Cena. And um, this was a really good show. However, there were a couple of booking decisions that I wasn't a fan of, particularly with uh, the two main matches, which we'll get into. Um, but we're just going to start off. We've got my notes here. Um... But this took place on August 23rd, 2015 at the Barclay Center in Brooklyn, New York, which is where they had the 2016 edition of SummerSlam, and I believe they're going to have the 2017 edition of the show. I could be wrong. Um, but this was also a four-hour pay-per-view as well. This was, the, I believe, the first time they did a four-hour SummerSlam. Uh, people can let me know in the comments if the, any of the earlier ones were four hours as well. But the show started off with uh, John Stewart, who was the host of the event, coming out and introducing the crowd, um, welcoming them to the show. And he talked about how upset he was about Brock Lesnar breaking the streak, and he was having an interview with Brock Lesnar. And he brings up Mick Foley, and Mick Foley thinks he's going to interview The Rock, uh, which made you think that The Rock was going to show up, and he didn't, sadly. Um, so then they basically just cut right to the opening video package. But in terms of the matches, they started the night off with Randy Orton versus Sheamus in a one-on-one -on -one match, which was pretty good. Um, not a great match by any means, but it was still a really good solid match to open up the show. Uh, they had a match at Battleground the month before, which Randy Orton won. Uh, Sheamus was also the Money in the Bank winner from 2015. Um, but it was, a, it was a solid match to open up the show. Uh, Sheamus won when he hit Randy Orton with two... Back-to-back -back bro kicks, uh, one in the corner, then one off the ropes to beat Orton with the pinfall afterwards. So, uh, good match to sh open up the show. Uh, then you had the Fatal 4-Way Tag Team Match for the WWE Tag Team Championships between the primetime players, Titus O'Neil and Darren Young, who were the champions, who won them at uh, Money in the Bank, I believe, off of the New Day, uh, versus the New Day who uh, came out before the match and cut a great promo on the cr with the crowd, um, which is edited on the DVD, by the way. Um, and the New Day members that competed in the match were uh, Big E and Kofi Kingston, and Xavier Woods is at, was at ringside. Um, versus the Lucha Dragons, Kalisto and Sin Cara, and then the Los Matadores, uh, Diego and Fernando with El Torito. And this was a really good tag match, and you know, all four teams got their stuff in, and of course you had Xavier Woods, at ringside, shouting all kinds of stuff at the crowd, which was hilarious. But um, the match ended when the Los Matadores, um, Kalisto and, um, it was Kalisto or Sin Cara, I can't remember who, and Tyus O'Neil were in the corner, and Tyus O'Neil powerbombs the Matadores who were giving a superplex to one of the Lucha Dragons. And then Kofi pins one of the Matadors to pick up the win and win the Tag Team Championships for the New Day. And this was the start of the New Day's mass, uh, significantly long uh, Tag Team Championship run from this show all the way through to the end of 2016. Uh, when they dropped them to uh, uh, Cesaro and Sheamus. Um, but it was a pretty good match. Uh, New Day was absolutely hilarious at the end of the match. They were doing the dance. And you had B doing the jig, which was highly inappropriate. But we're not going to get into too much into that. Um, you can look it up on YouTube if you want. Then you had uh, Rusev with Summer Rae versus Dolph Ziggler with Lana. This was a, a decent match for the most part between two guys who are vastly underutilized by the WWE, in my opinion. Um, of course, Ziggler had been injured 
prior to this match um, by Rusev, and um, it was a, it was a good de decent match. And then you had the women fighting as well, but the match ended in a double countout, uh, uh, which resulted in the match ending in a draw. And then they continued fighting afterwards. Um, you had Ru uh, Summer Ray and Lana fighting as well, but it was an okay match for the most part. Then you had uh, Stephen Amell and Neville versus Stardust and King Barrett. This was the whole deal where um, Cody Rhodes Stardust was going off on Stephen Amell, who's the uh, lead actor on the TV show Arrow, which I sadly don't watch. I've seen a couple of episodes of The Flash. I haven't watched uh, Arrow. Um, I've seen Supergirl as well as far as the CW superhero shows they do, but I'm not a huge fan of that stuff. Um, no disrespect to anybody who is. But I know who Stephen Amell is, though. Um, but um, this, of course, you know, led to a spot between the two of them on Raw. And Stephen Amell basically said to Triple H, you know, have your lawyers prepare the documents for me to sign. I want to do the match. And he was granted the match. Um, but this was a pretty good match for what it was. Uh, Stephen Amell didn't do a whole lot in this match. But for what he did do, he did a really good job. Um, and I assume that he's had, you know... F stunt training from the years of working on Arrow, which probably came in handy for this, but um, Neville did quite a fair bit of the work. Um, there were a lot of back and forth tags, but um, ultimately Neville and Stephen Amell got the win when uh, Neville pinned Barrett off the Red Arrow, and also there was a um, like a dog pile spot with um, uh, Amell and um, Barrett and Saros outside the ring. But yeah, Stephen Amell and uh, Neville uh, win the match off of the red, off of uh, Neville hitting the red arrow on uh, King Barrett, which was a decent match, as I said. Then you had probably the worst match in the night, which was the triple threat match for the Intercontinental Championship between Ryback, who was the champion, versus the Big Show versus the Miz. Um, as I said, probably worst match in the night. These guys only got a, a couple of minutes to work, um, and. Um, Miz basically was pretty much outside the ring for the first part of the match, and Ryback and Big Show went at it. And then Ryback eventually hit Big Show with the uh, shell shock. And then Miz comes back in and tries to pin both of them unsuccessfully. And then Big Show KO punches him. Ryback uh, throws Big Show out of the ring and then pins Miz to retain the Intercontinental Championship. Again, probably the weakest match of the night, in my opinion. But um, then we had Dean Ambrose and Roman Reigns. Versus Bray Wyatt and Luke Harper. This was coming off of the Bray Wyatt uh, Roman Reigns match at Battleground the month before, which was from Wyatt costing Reigns the Money in the Bank ladder match at Money in the Bank the month the pay per view before Battleground. But this was a really entertaining tag match too. These guys um, went at each other hard. Um, one cool spot was when uh, Ambrose ran across the announcer sales and then did a uh, some sort of a clothesline or basically like a. Uh, Dive spot onto uh, Bray Wyatt or, or, Car or Luke Harper over in the uh, Timekeepers area, but um, it was a pretty good match. And um, one cool spot in this match that I really liked was when Ambrose and uh, Reigns hit uh, Bray or Luke Harper with the Doomsday Device, which was a nice, cool little Road Warriors tribute. But um, Ambrose and Reigns ultimately got the win when Bray. Or when Ambrose or Roman hit hit Bray with the spear and then pinned him to get the win for his team, which was really cool to see uh, Ambrose and Reigns uh, team up and get the win. Then you had the match of the night for for my money's worth at least, which was the winner take all champion versus championship match for the WWE World Heavyweight and United States Championships between John Cena, who was the United States Champion, versus Seth Rollins, who was the WWE World Heavyweight Champion at the time. This was a great match. These two guys had really good chemistry in the ring. Regardless of what people want to say about Cena, he can go in the ring with guys who can wrestle. I mean, watch his match with CM Punk from Money in the Bank 2011, his match with AJ Styles from SummerSlam 2015, or some of the other matches that he's had with great in-ring guys. I mean, you put him in the ring with someone who can go, you're going to get a really good match. And this is a good example of that. He had a really good match with Rollins. They used a lot of their signature stuff. Rollins also used a lot of cool high-flying aerial spots in this match. Um, this was when Rollins had the white and gold uh, ring gear, 
which is what his uh, WWE Mattel Elite 45 figure is based off of for people who have that figure. But this was a really good match. Um, he only used, Cena only used one AA in this match. Or actually, no, he used two. But Rollins only kicked out of one. And um, But this was a really good match. They used a lot of good spot, had a lot, a lot of good stuff in this match. However, what killed it was the ending. And what happens is Cena sets Rollins up for another attitude adjustment. The ref gets taken out. Cena hits it with the AA. Or hits Rollins with the AA. And then John Stewart comes out to the ring with a steel chair. And John Stewart and Seth Rollins had had some interaction heading into WrestleMania 31 earlier that year. So you wondered who was he going to hit. And he ends up hitting Cena with the steel chair. And then gives it to Rollins. Rollins hits Cena with the pedigree on the chair. And then pins him 1, 2, 3 to win the United States Championship and retain the World Heavyweight Championship. So, bad finish, but still, nevertheless, match of the night for sure, uh, in my opinion. Then we had the Divas 3-team elimination tag team match between Paige Charlotte and Becky, a.k.a. Team PCB, versus the Bellas and Alicia Fox, a.k.a. Team Bella, versus Sasha Banks, Naomi, and Tamina, a.k.a. Team Bad. This was the when WWE began trying to revamp the women's division in the summer of 2015 when they brought up uh, uh, Charlotte, Sasha, and Becky lunch up to the main roster from NXT and they did the whole three-team warfare which was a good idea at the time but I think ultimately they should have just done individual uh, warfare as opposed to just doing the three-team warfare which as I said was a cool idea at the time but once uh, Charlotte won the championship off of Nikki and Nia Champions the whole thing kind of fizzled out from where I stood at the time but this match itself was pretty good. Um, there were some cool spots in there. You know, all nine women got their stuff in for the most part. Um, and it was an elimination tag team match too. So basically once a member of each team was eliminated, um, they were basically out. And um, Team Bad was eliminated first when Bree pinned Tamina. And then uh, Becky Lynch pinned Brie Bella with a pump handle slam off of a missed drop kick to get the win for Team PCB. But it was a pretty good match overall. Then you had Cesaro and Kevin Owens. And this was a really good match. Th this was really good. I really enjoyed this match. Two guys who I really enjoy watching whenever I get the chance to watch the products. Um, again, Cesaro, one of the most underutilized guys on the roster. He should be a world champion at least once, if not twice, before his WWE uh, contract expires. I'm hoping they give him a run with the as the world champion at some point. And Kevin Owens is great as a heel. But this was a really good match. They, there was a fair amount of high-flying spots in this match. Um, of course, Cesaro, strong as hell. Um, ton of good uh, spots in this match, but... Um, Kevin Owens ultimately wins when he hits Cesaro with the pop-up powerbomb and gets the 1-2-3 to win the match, but it was a really good match. And it could have, and it could have gone uh, either way, and I would have been fine with it. Um, and then last but not least, we had the main event, which was the rematch considered too big for WrestleMania, or as I referred to it as the grudge match 16 months in the making between The Undertaker and Brock Lesnar with Paul Heyman and Brock Lesnar's corner. Of course, this was the whole deal where Paul Heyman had basically been bragging for over a year about how Brock Lesnar had broken the streak at WrestleMania 30. Well, Undertaker had finally had enough of Paul Heyman's glow and decided it was time to get revenge, so he showed up at Battleground the month before this and cost Lesnar the WWE World Heavyweight Championship against Seth Rollins. This led to this match having, of course, they had the brawl on Raw the night after Battleground, which was great. And uh, Lesnar's telling Taker, I'm going to kill you, and Lesnar's and Undertaker's just like, you're going to have to. And this was a great match. Um, definitely better than their WrestleMania 30 match by a large margin. Very physical match. They beat the living hell out of each other. And Lesnar comes out first, and then Undertaker comes out. And as Undertaker's getting in the ring, Lesnar attacks him, knocks his hat off. But Undertaker fights back and then knocks Lesnar out of the ring and rips his coat off. And then the match gets going, and they beat the living hell out of each other, as I said before. Very, very physical match. Um, Lesnar gets busted open a couple of times in this match, actually. Um, one spot in the match that 
particularly scared me a little bit was um, the spot where Undertaker got F5 through the announce table. But he was only able to get back in the ring. Um, they continue fighting and then there's that great spot where they're both sitting up and they're laughing at each other, which is great. Um, they hit each other with, <laughs> excuse me, with just about everything, you know, choke slams, the F5, German suplexes. Um, Lesnar, of course, bleeding profusely all throughout the match. Um, then Undertaker hits him with the Tombstone pile driver. Lesnar kicks out. Undertaker hits him. Lesnar hits Undertaker with the F5, I think, two or three times. And Undertaker kicks out. And the match keeps going. And then we get to the ending, which, much like the Cena Rollins match, this was ruined by the ending, for me at least, where Undertaker puts Lesnar in the Hell's Gate. Lesnar counters. Um. Lesnar puts Undertaker in the Kimura Lock, and for people who haven't seen this, Lesnar's head is basically facing towards the entrance ramp, and Charles Robinson, who was the referee in this match, is on Lesnar's right-hand side, paying attention to his shoulders. Undertaker rolls up Lesnar to get some to pin him. Ref counts one. Lesnar rolls his shoulder up, and then the timekeeper rings the bell, and the... Paul Hammond gets back there and he raises Lesnar's hand and Charles Robinson is like, it was a one count, what are you doing? And Undertaker sneaks up behind Lesnar, hits him with a low blow and puts him back in the Hell's Gate and telling Lesnar is telling Lesnar to tap out and Lesnar, because he's such a badass, just gives Undertaker the finger and on the DVD they do blur it out and as he's passing out the finger just goes down and Undertaker is declared the winner by submission and then they show the replay of, from a different angle, and it shows that what the referee didn't see, which what Heyman saw, was the Undertaker tapping out to the Kimura lock. And Heyman gets on the microphone and says, um, your winner by tap out submission is Brock Lesnar. So there was a lot of confusion at the end about who ultimately won. Undertaker was officially de declared the winner. But this led to the Hell in a Cell match uh, two months later between the two, which Lesnar won. But I still feel to this day that they should have just done a clean finish with Undertaker going over clean to get his revenge on Lesnar and then do the Hell in a Cell match as the tie-breaking match. Um, I don't get why they did the finish the way they did. If it was to keep Lesnar clean, I can understand that. But I think, you know, if you're going to have Undertaker go for his revenge on Lesnar for breaking the streak, you should have had Undertaker win clean. And then just do the, the Hell in a Cell match as the tiebreaker. But that's my opinion. But nevertheless, still a really good show overall. I don't normally do star ratings in my reviews. But if I was to give this a star rating, i give it a 3.5 out of 5. I would have given this a 4 out of 5 if the finishes to the Cena Rollins match and the Undertaker-Lesnar match were better. But nevertheless, the show was great overall. Um, my second favorite pay-per-view of the six that I watched in 2015. Um... But that'll, just, that'll do it for this review, guys. I'll leave your thoughts and comments below on what you think of this pay-per-view. Um, as I said, 3.5 out of 5 for sure. The rest of the undercard, for the most part, was solid or decent for the most part. But the top two matches on this show, definitely Cena Rollins and then Lesnar and Undertaker for sure. Um, definitely, in my opinion, check those two matches out. Um, and this is also a... Um, a two disc set as well. You got uh, Lesnar on one disc and you got Undertaker on the other disc. But overall, guys, um, that'll do it for this review. Um, I am going to have a channel update coming up uh, probably this weekend of what you guys can expect from the channel heading into the spring and the summer of this year. Um, my next WWE DVD pay per view review that I have planned is going to be Vengeance, but as I mentioned, I'll go into a little bit more detail about that in the channel update but uh thank you guys for watching this video be sure to like comment rate and subscribe and i will see you guys later